Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm gonna do a uh, classic rock reaction, man. I'm just continuing my uh, Led Zeppelin journey here. So, uh, what I've got today, man, um, I intended to complete the song Remains the Same today, and I was gonna do a uh, Heartbreaker and then also follow that up with, um, uh, Oh geez, what was my other uh, last Led Zeppelin? Misty Mountain Hub, uh, off of the song Remains the Same. But um, what I'm going to do instead, man, is uh, one of my longtime uh, subscribers, it's her birthday today, man. So, uh, so she was asking me if I could perhaps uh, do her a favor. So first and foremost, I just want to give a shout out and thanks very much and happy birthday, Sherry Sisko. Now, Sherry, for me to do you any damn favors, you should be telling me how old you are, man. How old are you? <laughs> uh, so with that, though, I'm going to uh, do a Led Zeppelin song called Sugar Mama. And then that's followed by an interview, a uh, Charlie Rose interview uh, of Led Zeppelin. And it's a lengthy one. It's almost 10 minutes long. So um, we'll get quite a lot of uh, info and insight uh, from Led Zeppelin. So... First, let's read Sherry's note, man. Uh, Sherry says, Hi Wayne, can you make me happy on my birthday? Bet you haven't heard this before. Here you go, this is Sugar Mama. I've noticed you were intrigued with Plant and Peter Grant's banter at the end of Over the Hills and Far Away. I realize you've done I realize you have done reactions to Led Zeppelin interviews. You have not done reactions to Led Zeppelin interviews. You should get a feel for how they conduct themselves around journalists and the like. So here is an interview with Charlie Rose of CBS. Thank you. Let's get it, Sherry. Okay, Sherry. Sounds good. Yeah, you're right, man. I, uh, I, uh, well, I, I have seen uh, the odd interview of such something in the capacity of maybe 30 seconds, something like that. But yeah, I haven't seen an interview at length. And this, um, this uh, link here is telling me that this is, uh, what, almost uh, t uh, over 10 minutes long. So yeah, it's, I'm sure, quite an in-depth interview. All right, man. So let's hit up the song first, Sugar Mom. Oops, there we go, that feels right. Okay, Led Zeppelin, Sugar Mama, let's get it. Hey, Sunny Boy Williamson. Wow. What a great cover. Punch in the face, melt your brain version. How great is John Bond? Great musician. 
Okay. That was a very sudden departure. Yo, holy cow. Damn, man. Uh, this is inc was incredible, is incredible. Holy cow. That is a cover of the old blues standard Sugar Baby Sugar Mama song, man. Oh, shit, man. We're going back like... Oh, man. When was the first... Uh, was it Tampa Red? Or was it... Uh, yeah. I think it was Tampa Red. And... Uh, my pop is going to kill me for this. I should know this one. Uh, 19... 32, I think. And so many of these old blues men have covered this man. Ah, uh, Sonny Boy, John Lee Hooker, oh, oh, B.B. King, man. All of these old blues men have touched this at some point in time. This is a song Kind of like uh, Train Kept a Rolling, uh, Black Betty, you know, those old, old soul blues standard uh, tunes. Um, fantastic. But this is such a. Uh, <laughs> a punch in the face, I like to call it. When Led Zeppelin take something from back in the day and then they do their thing with it, it's a punch in the face. And this is a song, man. I gotta play this for my pops. And I gotta be there to watch his face because uh, I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say, damn, man, what do these kids do to my damn song, man? That's what he's gonna say. He calls them kids. He's only a few years older, but he calls them kids. But man, that was wicked. That was, uh, well, first off, uh, too short. They could have extended that. Um, yeah, it's only three minutes long. They could have extended that into like, you know, probably uh, a 10 minute jam session, you know, with great instrumentals in the middle. And again, too, you take this song, I challenge you to try and pick the better musician out of a song like this. All four of them had their moment. All four of them were firing um, at a hundred. You know what I'm saying? You can't pick a favorite musician out of this lineup. Two years later, their whole chronology later, I still cannot pick a favorite musician out of these guys. Of course, they're different. They do different things. But damn, man. You know, uh, collectively, it's just an incredible thing. And you know what I was thinking about? How unfair is it to even draw comparisons to other... Uh, comparing, you know, other bands to Let's Up. It's just not fair to do that. But... Um, I'm thinking to myself from the point of view of, let's say, a contemporary band back then. Back in 68, early 69, and you're a band, you're a good band, and you are um, coasting and enjoying some wonderful success. You know, you're in the capacity of uh, Beatles, uh, Stones, Who, um, some of those great bands that were just on top at that point and then all of a sudden Led Zeppelin comes in just screaming through how would you feel you know um, my impression in my mind's eye I'm visualizing this as this song is playing I'm thinking to myself damn what is this who are these guys and kind of like forcing you to step aside a little bit 
You know what I'm saying? So when you're this damn good, immediately, of course, you're going to attract haters, praisers and haters. But uh, being a bandmate, band member, let me ask you this question. I should have saved this shit for a master class. But let me ask you this. If you were one of those prominent band members of one of those, those prominent bands back then, 68-ish, and then all of a sudden Led Zeppelin comes screaming through, and you see their rise just hit the market so hard and fast. Tell me if you were a band member, if you feel, how would you feel? How would you take it? What would you think? Would you say to yourself, holy shit, I gotta get to know these guys? Would you say to yourself, oh, you know, they're gonna be a fad, a flash in a pan? Would you say to yourself, um, I don't like, would you feel threatened? How would you feel if you are a member of one of those prominent bands and then all of a sudden Led Zeppelin hits you in late 68 and you get that first impression of holy shit? What would your follow-up thoughts be? Would you say to yourself, man, uh, you know, got to get to know these guys. These guys are going to put us under. Um, uh, I'm jealous of their success. Where are you at? What would you, how would you feel? That's my question. See, I didn't think about this ahead of time. That's why I'm kind of stumbling with the question. But you know what I'm getting at. Answer that for me. I should have saved that for a master class. All right. So, man. I don't want to talk too long because we've got, um, it's 11 minutes. It's an 11 minute interview with Charlie Rose. That's a lot to get to. So let's uh, do a little review of Sugar Mama. And you're right, Sherry. No, I have not heard this, man. Um, all right. So, but there's a decent amount of information here uh, about the song. Um, on Wikipedia, so let's uh, give it a read, man. All right, Sugar Mama, or Sugar Mama Blues, is a song that is a standard of the blues, called a toddy powerful slow blues by music journalist Char Charles Shaw Murray. It's been recorded by numerous artists, including early Chicago blues man Tampa Red, I was right, Sonny Boy Williamson the first, not the second, and Tommy McLennan. But yeah, man, that Zeppelin's rendition of this is anything but slow. You know, um, it's just uh, crazy thunder throughout. John Lee Hooker and Howlin' Wolf later adapted Sugar Mama for electric blues, and rock group Led Zeppelin reworked it during early recording sessions. Origins. Country blues man Yank Rachel recorded Sugar Farm Blues on February the 6th, 1934. Sonny Boy Williamson I, with whom Sugar Mom is often associated, was an early collaborator of Rachel. Themes that Yank Rachel recorded also turn up in the blues of Sleepy John Estes, Sonny Boy Williamson, and other artists from the same era and it would be difficult to determine which artist actually created any particular theme. Okay, Tampa Red's version. Tampa Red recorded two different versions of Sugar Mama Blues in 34, shortly after Rachel's Sugar Mama Blues. Both are medium tempo 12 bar blues that feature Red's trademark slide resonator guitar work and vocals. Sugar Mama, number one, recorded May 12, 1934, features the lyrics often found in subsequent versions of the song. Sugar Mama, Sugar Mama, please come back home. Bring me your granulated sugar and ease my misery. Yeah, okay, so uh, it was in 30, I was wrong. It wasn't 32, it was in 34. Sugar Mama Blues number two, recorded March 23rd of 34, has some different lyrics. Although recorded first, it was released later, hence number two. Sonny Boy Williamson first. 
John Lee, Sonny Boy Williamson, sometimes identified as the composer of Sugar Mama, first recorded the song three years after Temperet. The recording took place during his first session for Bluebird Records, May 5, uh, 1937, that also produced Good Morning Schoolgirl, which was used as the flip side for Sugar Mama. Williamson, Williamson's songs uses most of the lyrics in Tampa Red's Sugar Mama Blues No. 1, as well as the overall arrangement. However, his version features a harmonica solo with guitar accompaniment by Robert Lee McCoy, later known as Robert Nighthawk. Yeah, Robert Nighthawk. Brother died young, and I can't remember why he died so young. Okay. Williamson later recorded several versions of Sugar Mama Blues. Both Tampa Reds and Williamson's Sugar Mama Blues were released before Billboard magazine or similar services began tracking such releases, so it's difficult to gauge which version was more popular, although the song has been often identified with Williamson. Later renditions. See, this is the thing right here. I'm going to say this and I'm going to piss some people off. None of these blues standards really were very anchored down. So uh, you have bands that come along and um, shape it and do with it what they will. And there's no repercussions. You know, 50, 60, 70 years later, there's no repercussions for all of these guys who were using each other's material and all of that stuff and getting their own credit. But Led Zeppelin comes along and you're nailing these brothers' asses to the wall left and right. Shame on you guys. Shame on the whole industry for that shit. I'm serious about that. That's wrong on a number of levels. Because nobody was giving anybody else credit here, there, 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 all over the place. And then all of a sudden Led Zeppelin comes along and now you are just raking millions of dollars out of these guys. That shit's wrong. All right. I'm going to get fire. I know it. That's all good. Uh, later renditions. Sugar Mama Blues, usually called Sugar Mama, has been recorded by many musicians, including Tom McLennan, uh, John Lee Hooker, B.B. King. Uh, Hooker also used the song as basis for several of his own songs, such as Sally May. In 64, Howlin' Wolf recorded the song as My Country Sugar Mama. It was performed as a Chicago blues shuffle with lyrics from the Yank Rachel Tampa Red and Sonny Boy Williamson songs. The song was credited to Wolf as are many subsequent versions. And Fleetwood Mac with Otis Spann in 69 have also recorded versions of the song. Yeah, and uh, I believe Fleetwood Mac's version, Peter Green, love you brother, rest in peace sir. Peter Green's version was that slow burn. It really, really kind of um, was a, a really good um, version of the original, you know? Uh, Led Zeppelin's version though, this shit was a punch in the face, boy. My pop is gonna trip. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin recorded Sugar Mama, or Sugar Mama Mix, as listed on the album release during early recording sessions. Except for bootlegs, Sugar Mama remained unreleased until 2015, when it was included on the reissued version, Deluxe and Super Deluxe, of the album Coda. Sugar Mama was recorded during the same session as Baby Come On Home. Okay, man. So that concludes Wikipedia info on this excellent blues standard and a fantastic cover. My only knack against it is that it's too short. Maybe there is a live version out there that exists. And of course, with their live renditions, it might be longer. So yeah, you know, if I was to dock them for points or whatever, it would be because it's too short. Three minutes, man. Now, three minutes is powerful and it's strong. Uh, but yeah, man, you can extend this shit into a jam. These blue standards, they were meant to be extended, you know? So this song, no exception, man. All right, that was excellent. That was the shit. All right, man. So let us check out this interview uh, that Sherry wants me to see so bad. And it's uh, an interview with Charlie Rose. And this was in, uh, 
12, 21, 12. Okay. And uh, this was during their um, Kennedy Center honors. And I guess there were a, a number of interviews before or after their honors. So this is probably one of them. Gotcha. All right, man. Led Zeppelin interview with Charlie Rose, CBS This Morning. Let's get it. Is that all? Okay, we're done. Okay. What an excellent interview. Excellent interview, wow. Asked some really good questions. A touch over the top a little bit there, but all the same, yeah, very, very good questions that he asked. And um, for the most part, he shut up and he let them, you know, answer, which is really, really good. You know, uh, some questions, you know, um, require, you know, a couple of minutes, you know, to set up and, uh, really good in interviews, you know, um, I like Jonesy's style. He's just very, very straightforward. Did you believe that you were the best? Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Yo, man. Hey, excellent interview. And you're right, uh, Sherry, I got to definitely, uh, uh, consider doing, uh, more, uh, interview reactions and, um, they're very personable and uh, they express themselves very, very well. And they give you a really good idea of what was going on back then. And I like the idea that um, each band back in the day had their moment, had their time. Everyone was the greatest band at some point. You know what I mean? So they all shared that um, title, you know. But uh, yeah, you know, it depends on uh, your personal uh, preference, of course, you know, some people consider Led Zeppelin the greatest of all time uh, during their entire run, or, you know, there was maybe a switching of the guard, uh, so to speak, between, I don't know, the Stones, the Who, Zeppelin, you know, it's all good. They're all firing at uh, that moment where it comes to that creative process, where it comes to being, I think, um, bands back then really... Uh, how would I say, helped each other to reach higher uh, plateaus of creativity. You know, with the existence of The Who, for example, maybe they were indirectly um, helped and contributed to Led Zeppelin's creativity, spurring them on even further, and vice versa. And all these great collective bands, you know what I mean, gave each all a collective lift. And that's why... <clears throat> You have this period in time where there's just such a burst of creativity, just a burst of uh, bringing forth all of this great, fantastic music. I think that's really what it comes down to in the end. That Renaissance period of creativity was uh, infused with all of these great bands just kind of lifting each other up. I think that's really in the end what it's about, man. Uh, yeah, excellent interview. So. Before I bounce, let me just uh, scroll down here, check my notes, man. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned already that uh, I was going to do Heartbreaker and Misty Mountain Hop and uh, finish off the song Remains the Same. So I'll save that for uh, probably next week, unless I get another birthday request or something like that. But yeah, I'll, um, I'll save that for next week. Finish off the song remains the same, and then it's basically just redialing the clock, setting it back, and starting all over again, but with the live stuff. So I'm gonna start my Led Zeppelin journey once again with the live stuff. It's not gonna be as long as a two year stretch uh, doing the chronology of the studio albums, I don't think, uh, but it'll definitely be lengthy. It'll probably take me, um, yeah, I, I would say probably a decent year to get through all of the live stuff, uh, I'm guessing. Um, and there's gonna be probably different renditions of the same song and whatnot from different live feeds. And uh, I'm looking at how their sound, uh, how their live sound 
has changed, how it evolves, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to be looking at when I'm doing uh, a lot of their live stuff. So yeah, man, once I finish uh, Song Remains the Same, I'll basically start over again. And I believe that the first live uh, session, notable live session, was, uh, was it in 69 in Denmark, Denmark TV, the black and white um, special? I think that's uh, that's where I'll probably start, unless there's something earlier. I'll look into it. All right, man. So that concludes my look at uh, Sugar Mama and uh, this really excellent uh, interview with uh, Charlie Rose. Really, really nice uh, suggestions, uh, Sherry. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to you. I appreciate you sending me these. And everybody, hope you like this reaction, man. Take care, and I'll catch you in my next Zeppelin reaction. Peace.